Hello. Um, today I'm going to be going over a video that is called Ancient Aliens versus Ancient Black Race. White Professor explains who built the pyramids. Okay, now this is about the book called Black Genesis, I believe, and the author of the book uh, Black Genesis, uh, Robert Bouval. All right. Um, in this video, it's two hours and twenty minutes. He speaks on his uh, on the evidence he has found during his experience in Egypt, and he sets the record straight. He's talking to an audience of mainly, he, this is an Arab man, and he's talking to an audience of mainly black people. As he talks to this audience of mainly black people, he constantly tries to uh, uh, make this a personal fight for them, and constantly state things such as, these are your ancestors and this is your this and as he does this he even adds himself and he says things like are this and are that there are many that aside there are many races which make up the black populace. The term black means in all white societies that you do not exist, that you are not human. Yes, you're a man, but not on their terms. Not human means that you are an animal, or as they call it, a monster, because for some reason you can walk upright. When this man says these things, he doesn't say, you could be of this. He constantly says, you are. I want to make something very clear. When we go through the names of the Bible, not every African is from what we call Mizrahim, or Egypt, or which they say is actually Kemet. Uh, I haven't researched that enough to even... I, I don't care about a city's name. Kemet's not famous. Egypt's famous. Okay, and, and, and if you go to people and say... If people. Not just black people. If you go to people and say, Tell me something about Kemet. They'll be like, What is Kemet? You say, Tell me something about Egypt. They'll, they'll be like, Oh, the Pharaoh. So... So let's just keep it kind of simple. So, look, biblically, since something created all of us, not everybody from Africa, or not every African, is Mizrahim or Egyptian. Not every black person is a Canaanite. See, like I said, when we go over these names, you are be quite surprised. Listen, the Greeks say that the, the Chinese are the Shinna. That means the Chinese are actually Canaanites. They are one tribe of Canaan. Do you understand that? They're not necessarily pale, so they haven't suffered leprosy. Do you understand that? When we go to the Shinta something Canadian Indians who look just like Japanese people, kind of look Chinese too. When we go back to the Roman definition of Shinta, it says Chinese and Japanese both fall under this name as if they're both the same bloodline. They're pretending to be Asians. They are Canaanites. They are Africans. 
Go to the definition of Ham. It says Ham ordered them, all the Canaanites, black, white, red, whatever they are, out of Africa. You've got to understand that. What you term Asian is not Asian. Just like Caucasians in America call themselves Americans when they're really Europeans, they're not Americans either. Do you understand how this was? You are the child of Shem and you were pushed off your land by Canaanites that now call themselves Asian. We already saw the temple with the thousand, what, the thousand year old temple with the prophecy that the Asians would go, the Negroes, Negro wasn't, the term wasn't created then. The dark skinned, the, 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 the melanated bearded men would go into slavery. So do you, do you see what's really going on? If we go to the root of Europe, I'll bet we find tall white men, tall Caucasians. In that, in the definition for for Hamite, see, tall white men, uh, 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 and black men, wavy hair. This is how we find the wave process. If you got to manufacture your wave, you ain't an African. If your waves come naturally, you know you're African, based on the definition. But these people did the eth ethnological traits of everybody. Wait till I get my hands on that piece, that, that, that piece of information. I already saw it being flashed up on uh, Facebook. Now all I gotta do is print it out. Wait till I, wait till I break that study down. The Shinto are the so-called Asians who are really Canaanites. The Bible tells us, wherever Mount Ephraim was, that was the land of Ephraim that was taken. Right? That's what's talked about in Joshua, chapter 15, 16, 17 through 19. And you have the Perizzite Canaanites, right? That the Hebrews couldn't move. Isn't it funny how the parasite, parasite, it sounds like parasite, like they leech on to you, right? Crabs in a bucket, right? Can't find the parasites nowhere. I bet they're all intermixed with us. You got Hittites. John Campbell, 1890 something. 1890 something was arguing with the Canadian uh, Historic Society that they're, the, the Indians up there are Hittites and they have, what, Mongol dynasties? But they didn't want to publish that shit. So, so they discredited him as, as, as what? A historian. They would not take his information and put it in, what, the Ivy League schools. Hittites, stringy-haired Indians. Shinto, Chinese-Japanese-looking stringy-haired Indians of Canada as well. Starting to see, like, how these, what happens when we find Heth. Is that going to be another African that doesn't look like your typical African? Don't you get it? The Chinese, the Japanese are African. Period. Period. They're not Asian. They took your title. The American white man is not American white. He's a Caucasian European. He took your title. It's the same thing. And this, this stuff here, with this Black Genesis, um, if we're going to say Black Genesis, and we're going to associate it with the Bible, well, well, the Bible talks about leprosy. Why do we have to constantly ignore this? I don't understand 
Oh, that's right. Because this is the root of white supremacy. And again, you know, when you illuminate white supremacy and show how the sun really sees us, it's kind of funny that, the, that these people worship the sun god. Pale people sun worshiping. I mean, is that the biggest oxy fucking moron ever? Opposites, right? Black people should love the night, but yet they 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 they're extremely healthy in the sun, and, and, and white people who love the sun uh, are not healthy in the sun for long periods of time. Oh, the things that God has done to us. So, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to play any of this video. Um, there, there, there are points I kind of want to talk about, but, uh, it's a two hour, 20 minute video. I don't want to get, uh, lost trying to find places, um, places in the video. Uh, I want you to hear something. There, there are some things I do want you to hear. Let's see if I can. That is the truth of history. And, well, so on, this is where the story comes into play. Sorry, I'm kind of getting hot here. <laughs> well, so on, they took your history. Because it's okay to take your stuff. But if they take your history, they take your soul. There is. So if they take your history, they take your soul. Um, this comment isn't really true. To take someone's history is one thing. Uh, to take their history and them have no way to be in contact with history for a couple hundred years, not even knowing it exists, that's another. Again, your soul is in your blood. It is your willpower that they are taking from you. Oh, uh, he says something here. He says a lot of things later in this video that really that really mess up the credit of the things that he says earlier in the video. Let me just say this statement. So, 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 so real today. I was in Wall Street yesterday. A lot of angry people. They are a bit confused as to what they Now, see, uh, we have an interesting thing is the professor or leader of this class I already told uh, the people, you know, uh, you know, questions and questions only, no lectures. And, you know, now we have this woman uh, up here lecturing and stuff. And, uh, You mentioned Libya. Libya, there's a war going on there. And luckily it's now falling in the hands of some apparently reasonable people. It's important because the Libyan desert is the great Sahara. And it's full of the same. These people didn't just roam the Egyptian Sahara. They went all over the place. They went to the sub-Saharan of Mali, the real book. These were navigators, big travelers. Thousands of years before before the Greeks even invented the boat, let alone the ship. Well, that's why the spirit did not say Egypt. It said the land known as Kent. It said they had engineered because it's bigger than what we understand. Go ahead, go ahead. So thank you. Thank you for the point of view. It's my understanding that when the pyramids right. and uh, the money, the pyramids were done, and uh, these uh, uh, monuments, they were aligned with the heavens, and that's where the 23rd Psalms comes from. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and the Lord is my shepherd, meaning the king with his staff and his shield to comfort them. When you, say, you, know, you have a point in the sense that what we're looking there is the, what we call the hermetic axiom, the as above, so we know. All right, so now we always hear about the hermetics, but we have we ever thought to call it hamedics? As if uh, every uh, forefather has, uh, you know, um, a son that devises a religion or a son that is the priest over uh, their uh, religion. So you have Ham, you have Shem, you have Japheth, or Japheth, or however you want to pronounce it. So when you look at uh, Shem's uh, religion. Um, when you go into the book of Jashir, you learn that everybody goes and they work with Shem. Uh, uh, Esau went for a few years. Uh, Jacob went for many years. Uh, Eber went and Eber never left. Okay? Taking the uh, the, the name Hebrew from uh, Eber is as it's defined. So if your blood is of Hebrew, it we are called Hebrew because of our forefather Eber. Now, if you are a African American, a non-Negro, this is not picking and choosing. Your families know. If you are a non-Hebrew, you are African American, your spirituality fell under what we call hamedics. And what he's doing here is he's administering suggestions to these people with his book and book sales to focus on hamedics. Their hamedics has fallen. What they've talked about today is all these areas in Africa that are barren. And this man promotes the idea that all of you, no matter what your ancestor is, are from Africa. Not only that, there's no way that he's promoting that you're Canaanites. He's promoting that each and every one of you are Egyptians. Now, if historically, each and every one of your ancestors... Excuse me. Can you see how this works? They just throw advertisements at uh, you when they want. Now, each and every one of your ancestors could have walked through Egypt at some point in history but in no means does that mean that each and every one of your ancestors are Egyptian. I'm looking for a part where he says, where he explains, uh, that there is, uh, that, uh, his, his role, his role. I'd say it is the, 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 the Hebrews or the, the the New Testament, because we know it was there in ancient times. Right. But it was there, I'm saying it was there before, that's been plagiarized. Yeah. They took all this, like you said, you couldn't even stay in the desert and, 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 and build anything, and neither could, these, could the Hebrews or the Jews. It's all a lie, it's plagiarized. So he, he is Muslim, so he promotes Ishmael. So there's no way he's going to allow her to say that Jews are a lie. All right? Let, let me just say this statement. It's so, 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 so real today. I was in Wall Street yesterday. A lot of angry people there. They are a bit confused as to what they want to achieve. It's true. But you know what they have in common? They're pissed off with the system. Pissed off bad. They're pissed off in Egypt. 
the peace of Libya, the peace of Syria, the peace of all. Because what? The system has created a system that is calling them. You're a person who works all your It's a con system. And anywhere a white supremacist con system is set up, all melanated people, all people that have not suffered leprosy are on the bottom. If a white person goes to Mexico on vacation, they're a king there. If a Mexican goes to Mexico, they're just a fucking Mexican. Am I right or wrong? If a Japanese person goes to Mexico, they they look the same color as the Mexican. They're not exalted. China and Jap Japan are not part of Europe. Europeans are exalted. Whether they're the the tan Spanish, or the Italian, or the Swiss, now when you hear this man, if you watch this video, he puts himself in a us versus them category. Might I remind you, Caucasians come from Arab stock. He comes and complains about the system that he's a part of. This is the descendant of a slave trader telling you, I took you from here. Of course those aren't the words he's going to use. We went there to see your ancestors. We saw our ancestors. I can take you there and you can communicate with your ancestors so we can see our ancestors. Not only does he want you to buy his book, he wants to hope that randomly you're of Egypt blood and hope that randomly by touching pots you're going to see your ancestors, and he'll get to witness it. Your life, and you pay your taxes, and you pay your Medicaid, and you find yourself, your house is possessed, and you can see what's the system. The ancient Egyptians had mats. They, had, they didn't listen to man-made systems. They listened to the law of the cosmos. They listened to the universe. They listen to the inside law. The law where man is united with his land and that they all progress towards justice. They all progress towards this amazing concept. I'm sorry, are Arabs historically famous for slave trading? Are they historically famous for separating man from land? Are they historically famous for kidnapping uh, men from their land and taking them to a different land? Is that what they're historically famous for? Are they infamous for this? ...of mat, and they lived harmoniously. You've seen them from 10,000 years now, we can see them. No, nobody lived harmoniously because we can see it's been war, war, war with just a few years in between. The Hittites against Egypt, right off the bat. Abraham against the Canaanites, even before that. The Greeks come out and do what? Conquest. Who was conquesting before the Greeks? Persians. They fall under what category? Arabs. Come on, man! Untouched, harmoniously, wonderful art, wonderful exploits, the pyramids, the temples, all this 
until who came? The Romans. The Romans came and the whole thing went patient. All right, uh, I'm going to pause it for a second. The Romans came and the whole thing went patient. And you know what they did? The Romans, like the Romans, the Italians, they exploited Egypt. They took everything it had. That is the truth of history. And worst of all, and this is where Tony comes into play. Sorry, I'm kind of getting hot here. <laughs> Worst of all, they took your history. Because it's okay to take your stuff, but if they take your history, they take your soul. Right? Right. And now, we're not going to let this happen. People are working hard to bring this out in the open. We don't want this just to repeat. We want the whole world to say, this is the real history. Enough. That's it. Come on, that's what it is. Right, Tony? Right. You know, let me say this too. Um, traveling with, uh, with Robert in Atlanta, two and a half weeks ago at the Nile Valley Conference, Dr. Lena, my colleague, who, who found the tomb of Guacamole, was invited to come over to the conference. Um, Tom Brophy, the co author of um, Black Genesis, as well as Robert Shaw, who did the dating of a fair market the Sphinx. Um, for white folk, right, in the midst of black folk at this conference, never been exposed to these many black people and talking about history in this context, and it was transformative for them. They, they don't know what we don't know. Even they don't know. But what was interesting... In the beginning of this, he already expe expressed he spent 30 years in Africa. So, this guy spent 30 years in Africa, you know, doing shit and digging it up so what he's saying i only count the experience he's actually talking about the thing is, is to get feedback from them as they listen to dr french as they listen to scholars from senegal and from, from ghana and from from mali as they heard the truth i mean it resonated with them one of the things that we're confronted with right now robert's got a new book out called the master game and it deals with the game that is being played on everyone all over the world. And what it requires is that we're going to have to begin to wake up and start acting with a sense of purpose. A sense of purpose. We can't just talk about things that happen and not do anything to them. The only reason, the only way people can exploit you is if you remain silent and ignorant. You have to act, but you have to act with forethought. You know, the times in the 60s when we got upset and burned down our own, our own neighborhood. No, it's, it's, we, need, we need to use different strategies this time because times are changing. The world is changing. All right, uh, nobody burns down their own home. Um, that, that's, that's bullshit. It's a con. How come when this man is talking, nobody can shut the fuck up? Why does everybody got to chatter like they're in fucking church? I, I... Look, I hear what he's saying. And no, uh, he's probably not a Freemason. But I'm trying to find the point where I can show you that the other guy is a Freemason. So, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, yeah, it's, it's coming up, so my bad. And if we really believe that we are connected with our ancestors of thousands of years ago who set the world in motion, who set society in motion, we have to know that that same spirit, that same energy, that same consciousness is in us. And that by grounding ourselves, centering ourselves, and acting on what is inside of us, we can change the world again. Let me get to what Sister here and then get to the next slide. I just clarify what was found in the king's chamber through that small door. I don't think people oh. here may know that little piece. Uh, that be is, that, is that piece true or what? Well, yeah, they found the door. It's, it's actually it's true. What's behind the door? Well, can I share with you about that? Uh, uh, I have to be clear on this. Because there's been a lot of rumors and what's been found and has been 
secret exploration and all sorts of stuff. I have been at the very origins of this project with the discoverer of the first door, Rudolf Gatt. <laughs> I have been at the very origin of the first discovery of the door we looked at. Do you understand what that means? How do you become part of the, what, original team that gets to analyze hidden doors found in a pyramid thousands of years old? You've got to be on the inside. You've got to be part of the end game. Listen to him again. He's not somebody that was invited. Now it doesn't matter what this cat said. It wouldn't even matter if this cat was a Freemason. You got to defeat their arguments, right? Chamber through that small door. I don't think people oh. here they know that little piece. Oh, that's really is, that, is that piece true or what? Well, yeah, found the door. Yes, that's really true. Where's behind the door? Well, can I ask you about? Uh, I have to be. Clear on this. Because there's been a lot of rumors and what's been found, and there's been secret exploration and all sorts of stuff. I have been at the very origins of this project with the discoverer of the first door, Rudolf Gatterbrick. I'm actually the person who promoted Rudolf Gatterbrick's discovery in the international media. You probably will read all this in my book, The Iron Mystery, and in great detail, if you can find it, a book called Secret Chain. The whole story is told. Secret Chain. Secret Chain. Yeah, it, it's one of my fun books because it goes through the whole story, whether there is or there isn't secret chambers. Yeah. One of my fun books. Okay, now we're going to go back and we're going to go back towards the beginning. I mean, towards the middle. And we're going to see this part where he talks about these uh, pots that are found. All right. Now. He didn't talk about this and now you just heard he's been on the inside from the beginning of the secret chamber being found. Hold on, we gotta watch commercial. We need it real quick. Alright, there we go. Honestly, with all the heads of states of Europe and they took this continent and they said you take this and you take that. Oh that's a good part to hear too. And the Italians took uh, Somalia. See, I, I told you about Dumb Diversus, them cutting up the Americas and uh, everything south of the Azores Islands, meaning Africa. It's literally one hour into his lecture, and this is the first time somebody tells him to speak up. He's been mumbling the whole lecture. Now, you got to understand that's the audience's fault. When we show, when I show you the part back here, you can see when they pan into the audience, nobody sits in the first few rows. They all sit in the back, as if it's a bus. An hour into the lecture is the first time anybody, anybody says, hey, can you speak up? And then everybody, everybody else shouts, yeah, can you? Is this the lecturer's fault or the audience's fault? Okay, Africa, we're going to 
going now to up. And we go to that corner of north, up, which today we call Egypt. Kemet. And these are modern borders, right? Done by our European friends here. The Kemet is 22 and a half degrees, we're going to slip and we're going to put a border here between them. And they actually, they, they've actually sat in a room in Germany, honestly, with all the heads of states of Europe, and they took this continent and they said, you take this, and you take that, and you take this bit, and the Italians took uh, Somalia, and they divided it. So he says they sat in a room in Germany. This is the book of Daniel. This is Dumb Diverses. Excuse me. <clears throat> he stated prior to this, like two minutes prior to this, that a dam has been built so there's no water going down into Egypt anymore and so it's become a desert. And then he states that the white man is the only person uh, uh, on the earth that would do something like that to block water from reaching another area where it's populated and this goes along to show uh, something that's about to be shown here that I want to highlight Great Sahara, I call it the Egyptian Sahara and an eastern desert this is the bit that looks more particularly here more particularly here and now we go to the adventure of discovery the adventure of that's part of the fun because we're we tied to this, we're going to see. It. We are talking about it. In 1910, a man called Harvey King, he is an Englishman, from here he moved somewhere here. It doesn't look like it, but he did 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers in the open desert is quite a job. 700 <coughs> kilometers in the open desert, let me tell you. I, we, I'll tell you what, it's when you get to the end. It's a cookie stuff. But, came here, and you came across a hill. And you came across a hill, and it was full of pots. And he named it the pot hill. No idea what it was. Abu Badas in Arabic. The hill of pots. There they are, lots of pots. What will they do here? Comes another guy. Very sexy guy. <laughs> called Hassan El Bey. I'm saying it all now because he was actually a very handsome man. He was educated at Barrier College in Oxford. Spoke perfect English. He was an Egyptian. And among many others of his exploits, he was a fencing champion for the Olympics. Among many of his exploits, he seduced the Queen of Egypt. Had an affair with the Queen of Egypt. They said they married in secret. That's another story. It's kind of like a cross between Omar Sharif and Rudolf Valentino. <laughs> I love this guy. He did a lot of martyrs. Look how he goes. <laughs> and he performed the most daring, the most amazing adventure in exploration ever to be attempted before and after. Well, the before actually, wait a minute, no, 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 you're going to see. Not quite. Sure. On the coast of the Mediterranean, in a town called Sulu, you remember this Libyan border where all the refugees crossed during the Libyan uprising? They crossed at Sulu. He traveled 
1,200 kilometers because he had heard from the Bedouins of some magical, mysterious Shangri-Las in the desert, oasis that had wonderful things, and he sent to find them. And he did. He found two. He found one here called Arkenu. It is about here. And he found this zone, this zone here. He called it Ubaynat, the little eyes. Egyptian called eyes, <coughs> pools of water. It's the only place in all this vast Sahara that you find water. It's not underground water. It actually sweats from the hills. This is the tallest mountains in the Sahara. I look like a, it's a Google Earth. It's the most mysterious place you can imagine. I've been there. We're going to see pictures of it. But let's follow Hassanel because, wow, it's supposed, supposed to be totally uninhabited. There was supposed to be nobody there. Nobody had been there. This is 1923. They couldn't go there All right, because so they said it was impossible to go there. In 1933, they take this picture and this dark-skinned person is what an Egyptian looks like. So, <laughs> as you can see, he does look like the cow. He does match the cow that's behind him. All right, so. So, if you want to hear this better, or in context, or whatever, it's 107 of this video. Minute and seven. I'm going to keep playing it. Uh, I, I know because of his accent, it sounds funny, or it's, it's hard to, you know, uh, decipher. Not so much translate. So he's out in the middle of the desert. He decides just to make pit stops or, or make his own gas stations so that his camels can rest. But you know the rules of the desert. You got to travel during night. So they're sleeping and resting during the day. All right. So he says he gets to so far and then they wake up and there's a woman standing over him. The picture I showed you two or three minutes ago and I said it was a man that matched the cow. It wasn't a man. He was say he this person was stating the author of the book, Robert or Bobby Baval, Robert Duval, Robbie Robert Baval. Right, um, he states that the image that was shown on screen is the actual woman from 1933 when this guy woke up and uh, his guide was able to translate her ancient desert dialect. 
So his guide is translating. King Herod, he said. King Herod. I realized we don't have a picture of him, okay? I said, I actually took a picture of him. Don't see me good. So she says, would you like to meet my king, King Herod? And this is in 1933. And she took him to her people. There was 150 of them. And King Harry said to Hassanel, through the guides, what do you mean what we're doing? Excuse me, I don't know if he's saying King Harry or Harid or Hered. You want to see how old we are? Let me show you the drawings of our spiritual ancestors. Our genes, they call it. Our spiritual ancestors. They took them, Hassanel was flabbergasted because there were these drawings. Look carefully. There are animals that should not be there. Giraffes and hippopotamus and <coughs> elephants and lions. <coughs> animals that can only exist then and now. Only a thousand kilometers further south. Which proves what? That the Sahara was further. And with this information, we took it to National Geographic and they went, wow! There were people there. You know these people that you saw in photographs? When they returned there two years later. They so look at this. Let's see, see, they got this tractor car to uh, be able to roam through the desert, right? They've got tank wheels attached to that. Alright, so he's starting to say, right before I paused it, they went back two years later. Now, I'm going to rewind it a little bit. And lions, animals that can only exist then and now, only a thousand kilometers further south. Which proves what? That the Sahara was further. And with this information, we took it to National Geographic. Now listen. And they went, wow. There were people there. There you were know people, people there. Just went for us. When they returned there two years later, they had gone. We don't know where they are. Maybe they returned to their origins. Nobody's ever found them. Maybe they returned to their origins. When she meets the sheik or whatever his name is that's traveling out in the desert, she states they've been there in the desert the whole time. When you guys go back, when I'm sorry, when 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 what National Geographic's or when when whoever goes back two years later, they can't find them. Only one two things have happened: either they're nomadic and they move. Or they just move or privately someone went back before that two-year period and eradicated them for 150 people that claim to always be by these watering holes that are hidden in the middle of the desert and now they're just gone Speak in a language that is ancient. Now, there's another point in this video where there's another discovery, and they find these things uh, that match the constellations. And he expresses how angry he is when they are moved, they are moved to a Nubian museum. They explain everything found out here is moved to a Nubian museum. Now he will go on for about a half hour talking about the cave drawings um, and associating himself with them and associating his black audience with them. Uh, which is fine, you know, we live in a system of con, and as he already uh, states, um, and he's just playing the, the hand that was dealt him, right? Uh, you know, look, the 
farther we go, the more it's really pointing the finger at what's wrong with other things. And we're getting to a point where we're running out of people. It's really high time we point the finger at ourselves. All right? You guys think this is entertainment, and it's not entertainment. The uh, the man the man that's with them says something very important that we have to change. You know, but the things he says about changing are really really silly. Uh, see if I can get back to that point. They didn't listen. Hold on one second. See, I do this just on the fly. Right now, Bobby's got a new book called, called The Master Game, and it deals with the game that is being played on everyone all over the world. And what it requires is that we're going to have to begin to wake up and start acting with a sense of purpose. A sense of purpose. We can't just talk about things that happen and not do anything today. The only reason, the only way people can exploit you is if you remain silent and ignorant. You have to act, but you have to act with forethought. You know, the times in the 60s when we got upset and burned down our own, our own neighborhood. No, it's, it's, we, need, we need to use different strategies this time because times are changing. The world is changing. And if we really believe that we are connected with our ancestors of thousands of years ago who set the world in motion, who set society in motion, we have to know that that same spirit, that same energy, that same consciousness is in us. Mm. That is that is pretty sincere. But the problem is nobody's telling you how to do it. Everybody's giving you wishful thinking. Nobody's telling you how to do it. You've got to set goals. You've got to set goals that are reachable. And, and that's the thing. Nobody's willing to eat uh, uh, beef hot dogs and beans all week long. Nobody's willing to have peanut butter and jelly all week long. Listen, if it all if you believe it all starts with finance, nobody's willing to to to, to have it start with their actual belief system. See, if it's finance, if I need money to do this, if I need money to do that, we're not putting the effort forward. If we need to make the change, if 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 we need to leave, hey, let's say you believe uh, Israel on the other side of the world is, is truly where we're supposed to be. You're not putting those efforts forth. If you are a member of one of these camps and these camps say, you need to do this, 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 and this, and, and you're still not putting those efforts forth. You understand my perspective of all of this. We need to leave. And to be able to leave, we must make goals. And the biggest thing about this is our discipline. We're adults with children's mentalities. It's the hand that we're dealt. So we have to discipline ourselves. Without discipline, we're just men and women running around with idle time complaining how we don't have any progress because there's nobody there are we crying for a fake worldly dad to hold our hands like that guy said you're gonna call people to go down to South America with no finance there's no welfare for us. We are adults. You take one dollar, you buy a pack of pens, you take another dollar, you buy a notepad. Here's the part that's free. You just sit and think. How are you going to be able to make it outside of here? You watch all these survival shows. These people can live in weeks in the woods 
with what? A, a fire starter. You ever watch Naked and Afraid? It looks like they suck. It looks like they've actually had like three good contestants on. And, 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 then, and then usually they fold. You know, like, I mean, there's a lot of good uh, people that have, you know, successfully completed it, but I'm just saying. It looks like they've only had, like, three out outdoorsy people. They put, they had that Navy SEAL on there, that special ops guy. They put him on a sunny beach, and he just sat there like a clam, turning, turning red. <laughs> like, he couldn't be effective when, 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 it, when it was on the line. The woman that was with him that was braiding things up was more effective to braid baskets and, and catch fish. So, if we're not willing to put our asses on the line to secure things like skills, what do I mean by that? They have a book for everything, don't they? If you want to eat in the wild, they have books on edibles. If they want, if you want to what uh, survive in the wild, they have survival books, don't they? If you're not willing to grab those books and study them, how many of you have books that you haven't even opened? That's us. That's what's wrong with us. Open those books you have. Don't be afraid of what the book is. It's an ocean. When you go to the ocean, you don't say it's a big ocean. No, you take your clothes off and you jump in, right? Go into those books that you have. Decipher through the information that's given to you. Test yourself. You've watched all these TV shows based on what? Detectives. You know how detectives think, you know how criminals think. You're in a criminalistic society that tries to find the next new way to steal before a law is put on top of it. So change your mode of thinking. Think about survival. I'll tell you what. An article was sent to me. It said, I wonder how fast I can find this one. It said, Russia is up in Canada, uh, the northern the northern region for war games. Uh, uh, I mean, they've been there practicing war games. Let me just get the article, and then, uh, and then you'll understand what's going on there, actually. I uh, don't see the article. Oh, man. Oh well. Don't see the article. Well, anyway, it says uh, calls. The article calls uh, Russia. I mean, uh, Canada, anti-Russian. Ah, here it is. I have the article. It's on my phone. Look for this title. Forget Syria. Okay, pause it. Open that title on your screen. Open it in a new tab. This is. I'm going to read from this. Okay, if you don't want to see me just sitting here holding this little device, then open Forget Syria. Russia's muscle is moving closer to Canada's doorstep. Get that article up on your screen. All right, let's do it. Putin's military-backed uh, buildup in Arctic Pacific could set new Canadian defense priorities. And then you have you a nice set of ships just all coming on in, right? Russian Pacific Navy ships sail near the Skakalin Island during military exercises two years ago. So this is a picture taken two years ago. Moscow has spent almost 60 bits, excuse me, 600 billion 
over the past decade upgrading its military. So, check this out. And this is a, a long article. An oddity of Canada's foreign policy of late, how gravely we viewed Russia's expanding power in a distant Eastern Europe and Syria, yet took scarce note of Moscow's actions closer to our own Arctic and Asia-Pacific interests. Even allowing for the vast distances in involved, Vladimir Putin's strategic th thrusts are almost on our doorstep and may well require far more serious attention from the incoming Libya uh, li liberal government. For Russia is militarizing its section of the Arctic and expanding its naval operations through the already tense Asian rim of the Pacific at the time when the more when more than half dozen nations that excuse me when more than half dozen nations there including in particular US and China and Japan are struggling to redefine a new balance of power in the region granted Russia is not Canada's only concern excuse me granted Russia is not Canada's only concern but Russia is special it is a feisty northern neighbor, so they call them the northern neighbor. All right, so if you if you think about that, you know, um, from our position on a map, you know, that would make Egypt even more so northern than that. Uh, but anyway, I saw a map where Egypt was over here in what you would call the uh, east, and we're over here in the west. All the Americas. And like, this is south and this is north. So like, so like, so like, Seattle is in the north, west. Even though on our map, Seattle's northwest. Anyway, if I if I do that map, like, I, I don't know, man, because it's, it's it's like like if you look at it like from from their perspective, they drew the Earth like a football field, you know, and it's like it's it's kind of like the NATO thing, you know, it's kind of like the NATO stamp. No, but not to get sidetracked. Uh, our feisty northern neighbor and our relations are in the pits. Canada is reportedly uh, even seen in Moscow as the most anti-Russian nation on earth in the more recent Stephen Harper years. All right, so uh. Arctic War Games, and scroll down to Arctic War Games. Uh, for one, he has made priority in the Arctic where huge amounts of untapped oil and gas uh, reserves are expected to become extractable as ice caps melt, and where strategically advantages, ad, ad, advantages shipping lanes could not open to a fleet of Russian and Chinese icebreakers. Militarization of the Arctic is, all, all, is always worrisome because that of the quaint vagueness surrounding who owns that, excuse me, who owns what. This sovereignty holdover from the colonial era still hasn't been settled, which means disputed expansions and future intimidation can be expected. Not unlike that's what's going on in the South China Sea. The U.S. has significant Arctic ready forces, ready, excuse me, Arctic ready forces already stationed in Alaska. To match this, Putin recently set up Russia's grandly titled Arctic Joint Strategic Command North, consisting of two monetarized, excuse me, motorized brigades and panzer 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 s1 anti air missiles boy that's a mouthful of war they worship jesus over there there's two jesus two christian nations fighting each other Russia is also a far more uh, more active 
in the Arctic than the U.S. and Canada. Last March, for example, Putin oversaw the largest Arctic war games ever. 35,000 Russian troops, 50 surface ships and submarines, along with 110 aircraft. All right, so... Doop, 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 So it's just, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. All right, um... I recently saw a video uh, on YouTube where it said a Russian plane had buzzed uh, a U.S. warship. And I was thinking when I saw that, maybe I should make a video about that. But, uh, of course I didn't. And it was really weird. Pardon me. I'm drinking soda and it makes me burp, so gassy. Can't help that. We've got untapped oil and untapped gases. Uh, so, uh... I thought it was kind of weird. They had a, 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 a giant Russian plane. Now, I don't know if it was a bomber. I don't know if it was a spy ship. I forgot what the article was. If I go try to search for the article, I'm not going to find it, so I'm going to just tell you. Um, it, it was a video report. Um, and what was going on in it is on the deck of the U.S. ship that was... Uh, that they recorded this plane going over, uh, this Russian plane going over. All the U.S. sailors were on deck, and I thought that kind of weird. Um, we got in Syria. We have the United States uh, active military on one side of this war. We have Russia on the other side of this war. Um, you have a Russian ship flying over a U.S. I believe it's a it's a carrier or a battleship, and the crewmen the crew members are are on board. And what they were doing is they were lined up, which I thought kind of weird. Who in their right mind during time of war? And your basically your enemy's plane is over top of you, and you send your men on deck. I don't know if these men were already on deck when the plane came up, but what they showed on footage was the men on deck and the plane above. I think that's kind of weird. I think that's kind of like let me say what I thought when I saw it. I felt like the U.S. soldiers or sailors that were on that ship were being held hostage. Like, they put it... Like, you know how you're a gunman and you grab, like, a civilian, right? And you put it a gun or, some, or a knife against them while the cops are on the other side, you know, or something of that nature? You know, and it's like they were, like... They were holding those soldiers there saying, if you attack this ship, this is what you're going to kill. You know? And then it started to make me think, oh, what's, what's on the ship? That's so important that you're not even gonna f freaking defend it. You're you're gonna have the men line up. Now here's the thing. Again, I saw this. I don't know if the video author or the news station used the correct footage for the correct event. I don't know if they just wanted to show the ship that the plane flew over. I don't know if they just had a shot of the plane. I don't know if these were separate shots just combined uh, 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 to make this story. I don't know if they took the footage of the men on the ship from a ceremony and used it for this situation. All I can tell you is the thoughts I had when I saw it. So, it does make me kind of want to uh, 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 hunt down the uh, the video. So if I find the video, I'll attach it in the next couple of uh, seconds or minutes. And uh, if I don't find the video, then you know it's just the end of the video. You know, so um, so look, with all due respect to each viewer's heritage, look, I don't care about your belief system, but with respect to your heritage 
we, we all have ancestors. We, we need to go to our family members to do our best to try to find out who our ancestors are. This is why I explained to you what my ancestry was. You heard my, my great uncle uh, uh, on my father's side, that's 88, his or our uh, DNA go back to Russia. You know, you're taught that Negroes aren't from there. You're, you're taught Negroes have been all over the earth, but you know what I'm saying. And you can clearly see Africans are, Africans are taught that they're out of Africa, and Negroes are taught, and you're from this or that kingdom that was set up and overthrown. You're from this diaspora. So, so please keep this in mind. I understand if you've been told just because you're black that you're an Israelite. The children of Cain were promised slavery. Okay? I'm going I'm to put it to you just like that. And during that promise, Cain's getting cursed. But Noah... Noah just decides to say, Oh, Shem, Japheth's going to dwell in your tents. Now, if you combine that through history, Canaanites leaving Africa first, then Hebrews leaving Africa, and then Hebrews having to go through the land that the Canaanites have then settled in, and eventually overthrowing a couple of settlements and taking over them. You've got to see the bigger picture. Not to mention when the family, the grand family of the Assyrians comes and decides to move us. Literally moving one nation off of one soil to another. You've got to take this into understanding. You've got Omec heads from South America all the way up to what? Central America? Not in the North America. But no Omecs. If the Omecs are the Amorites and the Black Z, whose king was Ho Shen, the black, the, the, the black Chinese, that's what you guys keep calling them, just like you call people that look like me black, right? The, the black Chinese whose king is Ho Shen. In the Bible, Joshua's name is Hoshea. Comes over and eradicates the Amorites. Sends the rest of them off the land. In, in history, the Olmecs aren't here anymore. But you got Olmec looking people in what? Morocco? No. And Algiers. It is not that hard to match history and Bible. It is not that hard to match modern news reports to prophecy. So, I encourage you to seek out your history. It is not that hard. Good day. As Navy says, two Russian maritime patrol jets flew within one nautical mile of the U.S. aircraft carrier, the USS Reagan during the U.S.-South Korean naval drills on October 27. The U.S. said it received no response when it tried to contact the Russian planes, and the U.S. Navy sent four fully loaded fighter jets to fly alongside the Russian aircraft. No confrontation took place, but a U.S. Navy spokesperson said Russia should obey international rules. American boots will soon be on the ground in Syria. President Obama has ordered about 50 U.S. Special Operations troops to northern Syria to aid Kurdish units and others battling the ISIS terror army.
after Obama had previously said he would not send U.S. ground forces to Syria, a White House... Okay, so, here in the video, there's a uh, YouTube artist, that uh, author, that uh, makes uh, videos of the news. He calls himself Angel of the Apocalypse. I don't know him, I just watch the videos, because I don't have time to sit there and watch a bunch of different news reports, you know, it gives me about 30 minutes of news, and you set them up by month. There's also another person down here that I watch, it's Soldier of God, Soldier of God, and I would suggest watching October. There is a video in October. Here, let me show you. Let's see if I can just find it real quick. So I took this job. Uh, and I know I can do better. Come on, and I opened it's time that. I did something no. about it. Bryant and Stratton College. For every and in life, campus and online. Internships and real world experience. Right. Support now. And computers your give career. me a hard time. Who would rather play that commercial and feel like it did something today? Alright, it's being unusually long. Alright, so we go to videos. So we go to videos. Come on, piece of crap. Alright, so. I would guess. It would be in one of these three. Give me one second. All right, I found the one I wanted to watch, so. We were more than 80 Yazidi children at the camp in addition to Muslim children. There were 5 year old and 6 year old children up to 15 year old. <coughs> My 15 year old cousin is still there. So these are boys and girls. Okay? So here in America they're just going to draft the women here they've already drafted the children military training included how to use the machine gun and undisciplined children were punished by leaving them under the cell or lashing them with the hose 32 year old Emily Whitehead is due in seven weeks plans to get the flu and whooping cough detap shots we definitely are like mindful about like vaccinations I've heard that the, the whooping cough is the um, is like a really good one to get. Doctors previously recommended the two vaccines be given weeks apart. But now, a new six-year study in the Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology finds getting the shots at the same time is just as safe as spacing them out. No, they've already done a study show, showing that they hid the numbers. The guy at the CDC that was connected with the CDC he already confessed to the doctor whose child has autism states it's because they did not space these shots out these shots that contain what cancerous pusses from from different types of animals cat leukemia monkey pus women be reassured by this oh definitely study co-author marlene luck says they found no significant increased risk of fever or other adverse effects to the mother or baby. There was no difference in, in, in 
early birth, in low birth weight, uh, um, in any, any of the baby's outcomes. Research shows moms pass on some immunity to their newborns when they receive the shots late in their pregnancies. We need to tell pregnant ladies this so that they understand that it's extremely safe and it protects both them and the baby. For Whitehead, who's having a girl, it eases her mind even more now that flu season has arrived. That's a complete lie. And they know it. That's going to cause autism before at birth at birth and that's I wanted you to see that that's the soldier of God if you want to watch news reports and now we are here on this one and we want to back up a little bit I want you to watch this I want you know look I'm not trying to like influence you I'm trying to wake you up now, I want you to think about Flat Earth. Now, I, I want you to see this video, and then we're going to go to the Halloween uh, comet or asteroid. And I want you to think about Flat Earth when he talks about the Halloween asteroid. The Arabian Peninsula. I want you to see this. Does it matter if it's harp? Does it matter if it's God? So from one, why we should be gazing upwards and perhaps counting our lucky stars, we reach the host of Quirks and Quirks. Bob McDonald is in Victoria. So Bob, should we be excited or spooked about this asteroid? <laughs> Well, it's kind of funny, uh, Andrew, because uh, we've already got one of the first images of it, uh, a radar image of it, and it looks kind of spooky. It looks like a skull. It's this black thing with dark eyes, and ooh, it looks really creepy coming right towards us. But uh, <coughs> from a scientific point of view, it's uh, an opportunity to have a free mission to an asteroid. We don't have to build rockets and go out and find it. It came to us. So over the next few hours, uh, the largest telescopes on Earth are going to be looking at this thing and they're going to be bouncing radar waves and microwaves off this thing to try to image it as it goes by so we should get much clearer images as the day goes on we'll see it rotate uh, we'll see surface features on it and uh, just get a good look at it as it whizzes by our planet that is just unbelievable let's show that image again because it really, <laughs> this is Halloween and you're telling me that the asteroid that is about to fly the closest yeah. to Earth at around 1 p.m. <laughs> it looks like a skull. I mean, this is just too much. So there it is. That's the first image, yeah. as you say. Now, are, are you concerned, uh, Bob, that we only really found out about this three weeks ago? Um, well, yes. Listen very close. Yes, I'm concerned, but no, I'm not, and this is why. Listen. No, I mean, this one is coming at us from an odd direction. Most asteroids in our solar system are out between Mars and Jupiter, and they're basically on the same plane as all of the rest of the planets. The Earth <laughs> they're on the same plane. Earth and, and Mars and all, all of our planets, we all go around the sun like, uh, like we're sitting on the surface of a CD with the sun at the hole in the center. So it's all pretty flat. But this thing came from underneath the solar system. It's on a very different kind of orbit. Did you hear that? This thing came from underneath the solar system. It's a very interesting phrase, isn't it? It's coming up from below and around. And in our search for these asteroids, and there is an active program right now to try to identify all of these things out here that could threaten us, we don't usually look much in that direction. So that's why it was only seen three weeks ago. So I think we might have to think about our survey to uh, start looking in different directions for these things. All right, so let's say we had discovered it, and let's say it was coming too close for comfort. What would we have been able to do about it? Well, in this case, nothing. Uh, if it's only three weeks out, we don't have the resources on Earth. We don't have anything standing by right now that's ready to go out and try to do something about it. The only thing we can do is uh, 
if we did have something like that, is to try to nudge it just a little bit. If you can get it uh, when it's far enough away, a little further than three weeks actually, just nudge it a bit, it would miss it. <coughs> but otherwise, the only thing you could do is to evacuate the area where it's going to hit. And the scientists would be able to predict exactly where it's going to come down. So they could say, okay, it's going to hit uh, Scarborough, Ontario, and it's going to hit at exactly 1.03 this afternoon, then everybody would have to get out of there. But I don't know how you do that. How do you, how do you evacuate people because something this size would cause destruction all the way out to Nova Scotia? So it's, uh, it's pretty sad, and, and I think that we need to think about having something ready. It should be an international effort to have something ready to go at any time. At the moment, we don't have anything like that. So um, why is that, Bob? Because it's the size of two uh, states. Why don't we have anything to do anything about it? Well, that's one question. But also, in terms of the devastation, it's the size of, if I understand, full uh, two, two stadiums uh, or two, yeah. something like that. So why would something that, I mean, that, that is big, but it's not necessarily that big. Why would it devastate an area all the way to Nova Scotia? Well, it's uh, it's not as you're right. It's not as big as the one that knocked out the dinosaurs. That was uh, that was much larger. That caused planet-wide destruction. The reason these things do so much damage is because they're traveling very fast. This thing's doing about uh, oh I don't know forty thousand kilometers an hour. Like that's many many times faster than a rifle bullet. And if you think about a bullet, it's not very big, but it's going so fast it'll do a lot of damage to your body. So it's their speed, all of that energy that they carry, and when they hit the earth, all that energy is turned into into heat and you get these enormous explosions and then you get stuff blown up into the atmosphere, you get dust that comes down and covers the sun. So that's the problem, is that they're going so fast. Now what we have working for us is the fact that there aren't very many of them that actually cross our orbit. Um, they're, they're few and far between, but we still haven't identified them all. We've identified the big ones, the ones that, the dinosaur killers, those we know about, and there's nothing like that coming our way. But these smaller ones, they're a little trickier to find, and they can still surprise us once in a while. So I think we've got to do something about uh, getting ourselves a little more prepared than we are at the moment. Let's show that image one more time, because it's really something else as we continue to talk there, Bob. Come on, look at this. It does look like a skull. That's unbelievable. By the way, this was taken by the National Astronomy and Ionosphere uh, uh, Center, so there it is. Now, would, I, 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 you know, this is about to pass at 105 Eastern, so that's in about 20 minutes from now. Yeah. Would there be, I guess there's no way for anyone to see it with the naked eye. You have to have some really... No, no. Yeah. You need, you need a telescope and you need to know where to look. But uh, what you're seeing here is a phenomenon called, uh, that where, where the human eye tries to make faces. We're, we're very good at that. But what you're looking at are probably uh, just craters on its surface. Asteroids have very rough surfaces, uh, like the moon does. So that could be what that is. But we'll resolve that later on today. We're going to see better pictures. And we'll also see it from different sun angles. They just chose that picture to, to show everybody just because it's Halloween and it's kind of fun. But it's not actually a skull. I don't... Ah, uh, we don't know, do we, Bob? <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Great to talk to you as well. As Navy says, two Russian maritime patrol jets flew within one nautical mile of the U.S. aircraft carrier, the USS Reagan, during the U.S.-South Korean naval drills on October 27th. The U.S. said it received no response when it tried to contact the Russian planes, and the U.S. Navy sent four fully loaded fighter jets to fly alongside the Russian aircraft. No confrontation took place, but a U.S. Navy <coughs> person said Russia should be an international war. American boots will soon be on the ground. Okay, so you've seen those two uh, video authors. They just compile videos of the news. Uh, you know, when you're just compiling videos and news, it's hard to, uh, I guess, sculpt the news or anything like that. So, you know, I think it's fair suggestions. Um, did you hear that? Uh, the, I want you to think about something. We're a globe. We're, we're a ball. We're spinning, ah, uh, out of control, 7,000 miles an hour. Uh, this is the centrifugal force that creates gravity. And that means if it's sunlight on this side of the world at 1 p.m., then that means on the other side of the world it's dark somewhere, right? I mean, scientists must have calculated at this angle you should be able to see it, right? It's a ball, right? See, that's my point. 
if it's a ball and it's an it's a, it's an asteroid and it's moving, then that means that that a bunch of people should be able to see it all over the world. Not unless. Not unless the Earth is flat. Then you have a problem. The asteroid's traveling like down here. He said it's it's the whole universe. We're pl a plane. We're on a plane. This thing came out from underneath, right? If we're on a fucking ball, which part of is underneath? Uh, do you understand the language that they use? Like it's really hard to sit there and say we're a sphere spinning around you're not throwing up and you know we can't see something that's passing you have to know where to look and you have to have a, 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 a telescope okay that's fair but what area of the world do you have to live in since we live on a sphere so let me explain something to you this is round right so here's night and day right Here's daytime over here, here's nighttime down here. If 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 the comet I'll just hold it like that, you just think about the ha you know, halvesies, okay? So if the comet travels like this, it came from below, right? When when the when the moon's out, I mean the, the, you know, you know sun's down, so they call that you know, like the underneath. When I look up underneath my bed, it's dark, right? So this must be below. So the people that were in the hemisphere of the moon should have been able to see this comet first, right? See, you've got to actually listen to what he said. We're on a flat, right? Oh, yeah, 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 planets spinning around sun, whatever, right? They tell you there's a black hole sun as well. You know what that is? They say it's the center of the galaxy. So, if the black hole sun, it's a hole. It's like one of those, you know, when they show, you know, uh, dimensional travels, like spiral in, you know, like when you let water out of a sink and it makes the whirlwind, it's like they say that's the black hole that's in the center of the universe. If it's in the center of the universe, how can there be a hole if you would have to have a flat plane to be able to make a hole. No, no, you can make a hole in the ball. So, they say a lot of shit. It doesn't make sense unless it's drawn on paper and you consider that paper a foundation. What they're saying is there's a hole in empty space and things get sucked in and they don't know where it goes. But that's called the black hole sun. It's the black sun, but it's a hole in space. Right? You're on Earth. From your 360 degree, you know, unless you're standing by a hill, it's pretty much flat. If you dug a hole, that's the same thing. This comet, asteroid, rock, whatever, that is in the shape of, clearly in the shape of, clearly like a skull, clearly it's in the shape of a skull. Come on. And it came from below our, 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 our flat foundation. So... You know, look, just think about it. If you want further reading, go to Job. You can even go to, what, Job 38? The foundations of the earth. What did he say? He said the foundations of our galaxy are flat. Do I have to rewind it? I have no problem with that. I got all kinds of footage. You know? It's the same thing over and over again. To have a foundation is your parents in construction. Ask yourself why they have surveyors. Ask yourself why things need to be level when you build something. They need to be level 
Do you know the definition of level? Equal. Flat. Do you understand what the definition of foundation is? Pretty soon I'm either going to drop this or something stupid, so I'll just say. You've got to understand what's actually being said to you with the words being used to convey the message. You can't care about the messenger, you have to focus on the message. Au revoir.